we have this uh, one hour uh, forums. Uh, we invite uh, Professor and uh, Dr. Joe Samad on stage. And uh, we, would, um, we also take questions from the audience uh, if you have any question to ask. And this is a rare opportunity that we can uh, you know, share with. Uh, uh, it's not really a question, but I just give some probably a little bit of additional information. But uh, because, uh, what my, oh yeah, my name is Amdi. Yeah, so uh, I used to be the columnist with, in, with Dial Express, and I'm a young professor at the moment, running around. Okay, now, um, <coughs> like, pro is very seldom in Sabah or in Sarawak. You know, more or less, you are, you are confined to that area there. You writing, you you probably your thinking, yeah. Well, I'm more or less confined. Not really confined, but uh, I'm from Sabah. I'm, I just now I talked that I'm somewhere at the Brunei Bay, meaning to say if you are at Brunei Bay, you could either Sarawakian, you could Brunei, you could be from Labuan, you could from Sabah. So I'm in the middle there. So that's my origin. Now, um, that what interests me is that uh, just now earlier one we were three of us. We talk about a little bit about you know about the Islam, what happened in Peninsula, as it what happened to Sabah in Sarawak. I said, you see, the very much of Islam influence in Peninsula, you know, if you talk Negri Sembilan, Perak, all these things, they're from, from the Sumatra side, right? Uh, but if you're from Sabah and Sarawak, the Islam, mostly of them influence from Sabah and Sarawak are from Jawa, I think. That's why if you're from Jawa, you're a little bit of, you know, you can mix around, you sit in one table, you can eat your food, I eat my food, no problem, right? Unlike if you are from that Peninsula. Now, that's not the idea that I want to talk to, actually. Um, you see, my, I'm from, partly from Sarawak. You see, that's my origin. And uh, my grandpa, I don't think they are the religion. You see? So I got my niece, I got my nephew, who are, it could be, is IB, it could be RC. Probably some are still pagan, I don't know. And I'm Muslim because my grandpa was looked after by the Brunei and the Kedayan, so I become Muslim, right? So that would be very difficult for me to, to imagine what's happening to you and that financial part there. It's very difficult. You see, uh, last few months ago, I was sitting somewhere, minum kopi, you know, about midnight, and a little, you know, some, some young girl, some young man come and hug me, you know. And then some people look at me and say, oh, why that young lady with a small shot, you know, a shot, only a shot at night, and then uh, hugging me? And I said, that's my niece. <laughs> you know? That's what happened to us. That's what happened to us in Sabah and Sarawak, or in that region, especially the, the, the Brunei Bay area. So that's very difficult for us to talk, uh, you are Christian, uh, you are RC, because that's part of the family. That's what happened to me. And many more, if you're in Sabah, it's like that. So that's the, I think, the interesting part probably that we have to be cautious about, you know, conscious about um, in Sabah. And uh, I think uh, just now Sue was talking to me about, you know, if I can talk a little bit about that, the Islam from Jawa and the Islam from Aci. I said, no problem with that, you know. It's an interesting sub subject. But I said it's not really my expertise. But uh, you talk about Borneo, yes. You talk about Archipelagos, yes, I like that. Because of the, I think that's another interesting subject. Now, um, I congratulate uh, Pro because uh, uh, I've been reading that article, you know. And uh, because it's not really controversy in here, in Sabah. That's why don't people in Sabah are not writing like that. Not, you, don't, you don't write like what you wrote. Because no problem in here. Unless you go there, lah. Unless you go to, you know, you travel, lah. But I'm traveling from here because I got my second home in Puchong. So I used to be traveling in, in KL every, almost three months, every three months, every two months. So I can gauge that. I can see what happened. But 60 years, Prof, 60 years be independent. You talk about integration. I said, you to top it to integration in your department. So that it, doesn't, it doesn't work so far. What are you doing? Right? Uh, so um, I'm just I'm just going to I'm a bit to stop at that stage, right? So, <laughs> so thanks. Yeah, thank you very thanks, much. Bro. Yeah, Pro, you want to comment on this? Yes. Okay. Uh, I want to draw all of you to two incidents. 
involving uh, Malaysian graduates from public university. The first incident is the, uh, I call it the Jawi incident. Uh, I was involved in it um, because of the um, Muslim Malik thing about uh, saying that Jawi now needs to be with uh, the curriculum and all that. And uh, Dong Jia Zong, of which uh, I am also closely uh, associated with, um, wanted to have a congress uh, where he, they want to call all the Chinese uh, educators to come. And I told the chair, uh, I mean not the chairman, but uh, Dr. Tan Yu Sing, eh? Dr. Tan Yu Sing, one of those uh, very strong uh, uh, Chinese member. I said, hey, you don't do this. Lah. You do that, nah, it will become a Malayu China issue. Okay? If you want to call the Congress, okay, first you need to invite people like me and Siti or Joe Samad, all these crazy Malays, you know. In terms of, and then uh, we turn it into some sort of a uh, Congress Kebangsaan Pendidikan, something like that lah. And then uh, we discuss Jawi within that construct. Don't say things about, you know, this Jawi is going to cause problems and all that because it's going to be a, a, a race-based problem, okay? I said, don't do it. But they, they even initially they agreed. I said, okay, then, then we, we'll do what you, what you advise. And then uh, the uh, group of uh, GAMIS, eh, Gabungan uh, Mahasiswa Islam, I think. These are young people. They came and marched and uh, demonstrated against the Dong Zhong at the Kajang. And uh, they used words such as May 13. Okay, May 13. Then I told the, the Dr. Tan, hey, this one, uh, I think we better stop lah, okay, before it gets any worse. Then he told the Dong Zhong, but the Dong Zhong still wanted to continue. Luckily, the police stepped in and cancelled the event. So I was very happy because if not, ugly things happen. Now, what was it that I'm trying to say? Gamis is a group of young people, of course, the Malays. And importantly, they are from public university. Now, second incident. The second incident, I don't know whether some of you uh, have remembered. Uh, one of your anak Sabah, uh, Sabahan, graduated at University of Malaysia Sabah, went up the stage and did this Sig Heil thing. And in his Facebook, the, the, the report said that he agreed with the Hitler in killing all the Jews and he said that all the Jews should die, you know, millions of Jews and things like that. So when I saw that, even though it was one person, immediately I said, number one, how can this person think like that? Number one, uh, <laughs> if you know your Islam, Jews are part of Islam, you know, they, you're part of the narrative. You want to learn about Nabi Musa, Nabi Sulaiman. These are all Jewish yeah, uh, children of Israel. So the Prophet uh, uh, in the Quran also said you have to refer to teachings before and things like that. So you, you need to understand your, your, your Islam. Secondly, you don't even yourself know any Jew. And you passing judgment on children, on women, on old people and saying things like what Hitler did, right? to kill all, and Hitler probably did it like what Mahathir is trying to do with the uh, <laughs> non-Muslims and Malays. Eh? This is just a race uh, division thing. So that he can get more, more, more support from his so-called Christian, uh, Christian people. So the question, that, that then I saw, again, I saw, no one discussed the issue, not the Menteri Pengajian uh, Tinggi, not the Menteri Ugama, not and Mufti, no, nobody. And the Vice Chancellor shut up the issue and the only person who did uh, write something and said something was the German ambassador and myself. My question was, how did such a graduate from public university you know, have this perception? So if many of you think that uh, uh, you are safe because of your intermarriage and culture and all this, I think uh, you may need to pause and, and relook and think that this is a graduate tattoo. And then you also have graduate over in the Semenanjung. And they may have uh, be influenced. Now, I'm sorry, I'm not saying anything against my, 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 my friends in Ikram or Abim because Ikram and Abim are two of the Islamic reformists who are supposed to make Malays better people. But somehow, I, I, I'm, I'm afraid of thinking that perhaps the new generation, they are following not Islam, but they are following Abim, they are following Ikram, they are following the form. But perhaps they're not following the fundamental or foundation 
values of people like Anwar Ibrahim, Siddiq Fazil, or, 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 or Sa'ari Sungai. I read all, all these people. And, and there's absolutely nothing wrong. And in fact, it's excellent. But what are these new people? Then we have people like Isma, a very right-wing group, purposely trying to you know, instigate Malays uh, in, in so, all sorts of ways. So that, that is happening. And I just found out that uh, 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 an academic institute solely for the idea of creating the narrative of pencinaan Malaysia. I mean, you could see it from the website. Or the idea of Jewish influence in, in, in Malay society. And also the idea of Anglophile like myself and, and, and Joe Samad here trying to destroy the Malay punya construct. So, I'm sorry, but the uh, Congress Marwah Melayu was the devastation to me because I have always said that university is the test of First Nation. This is my word. When I told generally, they tak percaya. They said, oh, politician? No, politician, politician lah. But the fundamental, if you look at the graduate, how they think, what they think, macam mana they think, this is going to determine our future. And I'm in the university, not because I'm in the university that I said this. It is the graduate that you must see how they, they come up. So, 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 so this is the, the, the thing that is happening. And I'm sorry to say that Sabah and Sarawak are not free from this influence. Okay, and now you have the YouTube and the internet and per and GE15 was the fundamental proof, not just because of TikTok, not just because of the incendiary remarks of Hadi Awang or Muhyiddin, but the whole middle class and not only middle class, whole generation of young people. And I would like to go on record as saying that I was against Undi 18 from the very first day. Because I know how these people are educated, I know their parents, I know where they live, and they are in a silo of a single narrative. Not their fault, but it has been inherited that way. And because it's Semenanjung and the education system, and if you are sending uh, uh, your children over there, or even in fact here in University of Malaysia Sabah, or, or, or in Malaysia Sarawak, that is part of the uh, uh, of the narrative of uh, supremacy, not only of race and and that one not so bad lah. This is of religion. Ayang itu lagi teruk. So this is the the problem that I can see into the future. Sorry to bring the bearer of uh, solemn news, but uh, there are ways that uh, we could mitigate this. Can we get another? Hi. Good afternoon. No, no, I mean, it's interesting because Jonah is here. We're talking about Undi 18, so you... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> so you... Oh, you want to ask me? No, I mean, as a politician, you have to be aware <laughs> <laughs> of... <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe maybe you want, you want let the comment first, uh, Jonah, about Undi 18? What, you what is your experience? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I, w I, I thought of asking you another question as well yeah. after that in... Uh, Fazar, yeah. uh, talking about national, uh, uh, what do you call this, uh, education. Now, first of all, just to uh, introduce myself, my name is Joanna Henley Ramos. I'm uh, born and bred in Kyulu, uh, Sabahan. And um, yeah, and uh, I'm proud to s be a Sabahan myself, although I'm half English. <laughs> yeah, but I am also proud to say that I'm also a Sabahan and uh, Mantad Kyulu. <laughs> So the reason I came here today, um, because I saw about this topic about resetting Malaysia. And I believe that all of us are here gathered here today to have the same mission that to, we want to see not only, you know, we, there is a new government right now, because I'm not talking from a political point of view, but I am here as just a normal citizen who's coming here to also listen to see, you know, how from the education, faith and society, you know, how do we want to see Malaysia 10, 20 years ahead? And most of all, how do we want to see Sabah in the next 10 to 20 years ahead? And it's good for us to also, you know, see what is going on in West Malaysia. And I do agree with you, sir, that in Malaysia, I mean, in Sabah, we don't really have uh, an issue regards to religion. My very good friend here as well, she's a, she's a, 
um, she's a Muslim, but we never talk about religion among ourselves, and we've been friends for many years. So here in Sabah, that is, that is wonderful. Now, comment about Undi Lapamblas. I have a mixed feeling about it when it first came, because I do understand that when I was 18 years old, I couldn't even understand half of what's going on in the country. <laughs> I was just thinking of what I was doing after, you know, Form 5, which university I want to go to, you know, uh, I was doing all kinds of things, you know, when I was 18 years old. So I do understand the fact that because the education system we have in Malaysia does not prepare our younger generation to actually look into what is election is all about. It is not prepared. And which is why I actually commented a couple of years back about Undi Lapamblas. I said, okay. It's a very good reform you want to do about it, but is the education system that we have right now is ready for the young generation to come? I mean, you have people, uh, you have the um, subjects, in, uh, the GCSEs, for example, where they have a global citizenship, where they teach all of this. In fact, now when we see even in early childhood education, they are starting to teach about global citizenship. And even my young child, you know, she's in play school right now, and they are trying to, you know, um, uh, uh, teach about global citizenship. But what about those who are in high school right now? That's my comment about Undi 18. The question is, was or is the education system ready for it? Now, second, I want to ask a comment. Sorry, Datin, I'll just take the whole thing first. Yeah, okay, about national integration. Now, you mentioned just now about uh, public universities that you want to see, uh, you know, we want to see, if, if you want to see what is the traje trajectory of this country for the next 10 to 20 years, of course, you have to see how are the students in the public uh, universities at the moment. But what are your views about national integration when we have, we see, you know, um, some people have the idea of, of thinking that, you know, vernacular schools or, you know, religious schools is a stumbling block for national integration. Okay, so, um, what are your comments about this? And perhaps a third uh, comment that I would like to, I don't know, maybe Datu Joe, you have an idea about this, is that Sabah is, I like the article that you have, um, came, uh, what do you call this? Uh, recently, the 18th of March article about, is Sabah moving towards in extremism and intolerance? which I read the suggestions that you have made. And the first uh, suggestion, uh, suggestion that you came about was uh, about um, getting more young people to go to private universities as opposed to public universities. Now, the problem that we have in Sabah, first and foremost, I think as a citizen and looking at the previous general election, and it has also been researched um, by previous researchers, uh, the, by, by a couple of researchers stating that Sabah is moving towards race-based politics. Okay? And, and the research is it's very salient during the last general election that it's going towards that direction. Maybe the next 10 to, 10 to 20 years is probably going to be even worse than that. So, um, so maybe you also said that, you know, um, you have to send... Uh, these young people uh, to to private universities, but the problem that we have in Sabah, I mean, as opposed to pu public universities, but the problem that we have in Sabah is we don't even have the opportunity for education here. We don't even know how many graduates are Sabahans. There is no data about it. So if, if you want to, you know, I, I was trying, I was going back and forth to look for it. I mean, like, how many Sabahan graduates do you have? No data. Not that I know of. I don't know about this room, but not that I... They have, the graduates, the postgraduates and stuff. Okay, that's good. But I couldn't find. Yes, okay. So the, the point I'm trying to make is here that do you have any, what are your views and any suggestions about, you know, not moving towards that direction or maybe how can we, you know, disseminate the idea of not going towards race base in this uh, state? Thank you. Maybe we get uh, Tatin to answer your question and then we answer together. Oh, yeah. You have a quick one or comment. 
Yeah, answer first. All right. Okay, uh, just to remind on the time because we have to sort of like uh, end it like 3 30. You have one question. Uh? Uh, you want to wait to answer first? Or? Yeah, yeah. So, and, uh, so please keep your question short and so we can uh, reserve more time for Datuk, uh, for, for our doctor to answer. Yeah, I'm only Datuk with three grandchildren, right? So. <laughs> Yes, uh, I, I, I'll go straight to what I have uh, written before and I my stand on the vernacular school. First of all, the, the, the Malays uh, have a saying, uh, gajah di depan mata dia tak nampak. You know, tapi kuman di uh, <laughs> seberang sungai tu oh, terang. You know, Elephant in front of your eyes, you cannot see. But the, the, the dust in, fr- uh, in front of, uh, across the river, oh, you can see very clearly. The, the madrasa and the tafis school are all, you know, a single race, all right? And yet they are blaming on the vernacular school. That's number one when I, when I ask the critic. Number two, I said that uh, if you say that Bahasa Malaysia, these people are lacking in Bahasa Malaysia, I said uh, language is not the key to, to uh, uh, the idea of respecting others. It is what you put in the lesson. Okay, I'm not saying that vernacular school is good or anything because I have never been to vernacular school, but I'm just saying that these people are saying they have lacked Bahasa Malaysia, they have lacked uh, sejarah, and I've read the sejarah that uh, that uh, uh, you know, we have in this school. Th- this is not doing it, okay? When you don't understand what uh, 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 the, the, the Kita film is, is, is saying all this, then, then we are in trouble when we don't know each other. So we should review this uh, sejarah education and geography education and have, that's why I said that our education is industry-based. Cukup lah. Enough. You know, we have enough architects, enough engineers, more than engineers. Cukup. Now we must uh, have a, a human being that can be a global uh, blessing to, 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 to the world. We have to reach that far. So not all this uh, idea of nationalism, lah, apa semua tu. And that's why I said that if you can understand who you are from, from whichever race or, or faith that you, you, you have come from, and that is the valuable uh, asset of to define who you are. And then within that faith, find out how do you treat others. Are you supposed to treat others as enemies? Like some, some religion I know. They treat others as enemies. Okay, So you have to correct that and say, no, others are a complement to you are uh, to who you are, and and I said that. Well, I'm gonna get in trouble when I say that Muslims need the non-Muslims to complement their spirituality. Oh, uh, habis lah. I, I I will be you know uh, you know carried out somewhere. I said, why not? Why not? Didn't the Prophet Muhammad send the immigrants, the first one, to the a king uh, who was a Christian? Right? He needed that person to 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 help him with it. And if you were to uh, give sadaqah or zakat uh, to a person, don't you think that God will reward you whether you give it to a Muslim or to a non-Muslim? Are you going to ask a hungry child, kau ni Islam ke tak Islam? You know, before I give you food. Yeah, our conscience won't, won't, won't say that. So, so, so back to the idea of vernacular schools and tafi schools, my, my answer has always been like this. Uh, I said to a few Rotarians when they asked that same question, I said, look, instead of looking at them as a kind of a threat, why don't we, we, we offer something? I say, you go and offer uh, some uh, uh, classes in business studies or classes in extra English lessons to the tafis and the madrasa. Same thing with the vernacular school. Offer uh, electives in, in Budaya Melayu. You know, I even told Wee Kasyong, appoint me as vice chancellor for Ta University College. Senang cerita, you know. You are complaining uh, uh, about race, uh, you know, uh, uh, preference in public school. Yet MCA pun tak pernah juga lantik anybody, <laughs> you know, Malay in Ta University College. Don't you trust Prof Tajudin? Takkan lah kan? So the point here is that what I would have done, I would have placed a center for Malay civilization studies in Ta College and appoint people. And then I said to also. Uh, in an article called Bridging the, the Cultural and Religious Divide by having entrepreneurs having scholarship, you know. You offer a scholarship to, to Malays to study in China, to study in India, to study uh, whatever engineering. So they get, you know, involved with the other cultures. And with the non-Malays, you take them to do Malay studies, Islamic study. They don't have to become Muslim. They say, wah, nanti nak jadi kerja apa? What do you mean kerja apa? 
Huh? You got all these MPs yang tak tahu pun, you know, about Islam. You know, they become the uh, the bridge. This is the way that we have to think. We have to change. Oh no, my 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 son must be architect lah. You know, architect makes money. Uh, yeah. So so one time one parent said, Prof, what happened to our country? Eh? Uh, last time I can play with my Malay friends. Uh, this is Indian. Uh, and, and, and now I cannot. Uh, whose fault is it? Uh? It's your fault lah. I said. <laughs> what do you mean? You mean it's my fault? Isn't it? It's a politician. Did you ask your son whether he had? Uh, a friend from other culture or not. My question to UCSI graduate, 30 of them, for the valedictorian punya ni, question that, uh, can you name me one thing that you learn from another culture that has meaning to you? All these 3.9, 4.0 student cannot answer. Okay lah, tepi. Promotion to associate professor. Can you name me a book that you read outside of your engineering or architecture field that has uh, some sort of uh, paint a vision of you uh, in terms of a different kind of life or things like that. Uh, you know, our PhD graduate don't read book. That's why I wrote the article, a doctorate without philosophy. Okay, doctor of philosophy, doctorate without philosophy. We have a lot of work to do in our public university when they couldn't even let Anwar Ibrahim come uh, to, to give a lecture and close the gate and close the electricity. Can't even allow Fahmi Reza. I said, tak ada professor ke yang boleh <laughs> have a forum with Fahmi Reza. What level of professorship is this? You know? So, so the students need to define themselves among themselves as part of that they can be empowered to change the country. When you don't give that sense, like in UTM, in architecture, I say, first you must show, there's this gerbang. Second you must show, there's this palace, it's called the chancellery. You have feudalized knowledge. My next article is called The Feudalization of Malaysian Campus. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh -huh. So the, pala the, the campus, you can see, it started with UTM, University of Technology of Malaysia. And then it went on to UIA. I can tell you the architecture and I can tell you what happened to the, 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 the uh, administration of knowledge in this country. It goes, you know, politician can lie. Architecture cannot lie. Okay. Thank you. Hello. <coughs> okay, this is food for thought. Thank you, Hokso. I was, um, before that, I was in KL recently to attend the International Women's Day. It was organized by uh, United Nations and the NCWO, National uh, Congress of Women um, Organizations. And I said the same thing that you did when I stood up to um, ask a question. I was a minority there, <laughs> the only Sabahan. But I needed to go there to hear what it was all about because hardly ever any Sabahans are included uh, or involved in the uh, national uh, conversations uh, and discussions about whatever. So now, anyway, having said that, when you talk about resetting Malaysia, this is carried forward the ideology <laughs> that I had, ideology or the... Um, the indoctrination, perhaps, that people have had, all right? I don't know if you call it indoctrination, because you talk about race, religion, education, faith, and society, and mostly we blame politicians. But I um, mostly, and the people who are involved, uh, who are racist or um, religious extremists, please, everyone, Look around you. Um, I think there's, I, I'm glad to see there, the number of women here. So I'm talking about gender. The whole issue here now, I think this, the problem is because of inequality. And I'm not talking about equal men, women being equal, but you know, that is what is in the S um, sustainable development goal. Uh, but not just because of that, because it exists. The whole problem is about patriarchy. My daughter always talk about patriarchy. I did not understand it until that day when we were talking about women pro issues. There were a handful, or two or three men in the room. When you talk about families, you talk. There's only we organize events. There's only very few, one percent of men in the room. 
So when you, the man goes to the masjid, they talk and talk and talk. They go home, the women have prepared, mostly, the meal. Is that a race thing? A religion thing? Is that a culture thing? What is it? And I like what you said about individual. What each of us, an individual, can do. Now, I think the only way you can reset Malaysia is what each of us, as individual, how do you treat the opposite gender? Now, we are talking about 30% women being involved in politics and all that. That is the minimum because that is what the critical mass that you need in order to create a movement. It's not a minimum, but that was just the minimum that we needed uh, you know, to, to create some movement, okay, that 30%. So, but each of us, how many of us actually respect the other gender as having the same right to sit at the table where we are sitting at? So I don't know if anybody had ever actually thought about this, because to me, it is about the patriarchy problems that we have as a whole. Yeah. And I'd like to hear what you have to say about that. Uh, maybe my husband <laughs> don't answer. <laughs> uh, maybe I think I would prefer to hear uh, Prof <laughs> Tejudin. Joe, jo, you can answer the question Your at home. <laughs> Your next article to address this one. <laughs> okay. First of all, I, when reporters ask me a uh, question, I said, I don't answer questions on two things. One, on the economy, because I'm not very good economist, I don't really understand fully, so I, I cannot answer. Second, I don't answer, I will not answer question on rasuah. The one you ask Rafizi, I said. Okay? <laughs> now I'm going to add one more. Don't ask me about women. <laughs> Because <laughs> I have never written anything about women, that means I have not really given, you know, uh, either serious thought or I didn't think it was any any much of a problem. All I know is that I have to be careful with one woman, not my wife, <laughs> my daughter who has all my three grandchildren. You know, <laughs> but uh, just for your information, I mean, at UCSI, the vice chancellor is a woman. The Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Academic Affairs is a woman. The Deputy Vice-Chancellor of uh, Pembangunan is a woman. I mean, the women everywhere. You know? And uh, I, I said, uh, that's why in Senate meetings, I always keep quiet uh, now. <laughs> because uh, when, when the, uh, the, uh, the Vice-Chancellor uh, was a man, it's quite easy to, to relate. But then it's a, it's a bit difficult when, when it's a, a, a woman, not because of anything. It's just, it's just that the way that we, we communicate uh, is, is a bit different. But the point that I'm trying to raise about this, because that's why I never write about it, I simply said that in my book and my realization of spirituality. Spirituality is not really just about rituals or pilgrimage and things like that. It's simply what uh, Ajahn Brahm, the, 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 the Buddhist monk, said that really rang through uh, to a lot of my, uh, my writing. He asked the question, uh, who is the most important person in the world? That, that was a question that he asked in a, in a YouTube lecture. And the answer is when, when I ask other people, they, they, somebody will say their wife or their mother or their children or their grand, whatever. But the answer there, and I think I almost got the answer right, was that the most important person in the world is the one in front of you. Okay, so you have to let that sink in first. The most important person in the world is the one in front of you. So meaning that whoever is in front of you, this is the person that you give dignity of listening, of being, uh, you know, understanding or, or, or whatever, giving respect, not making judgment of that person and things like that. So when you then move on to another place and you are in front of somebody, then that is the most important person. It is also said in the hadith, the Prophet Muhammad, when he, when he speaks to anybody, when you speak to him, he would give full attention to you. And then when you are finished, then only he would move his whole body to another person. So, a similar thing, he is giving dignity and attention to you. Now, if we all understand this, if we all understand this, regardless whether what gender, what race, what religious, and what working are you, whether you are a doorman, or a clerk, or a, or a, or a lecturer, whoever comes 
to you. This is the person that you give dignity to. One other thing I learned from uh, 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 well, he's a, a, a pastor who's a, who's a psychologist, uh, um, Dr. Norman Vincent Pale. Uh, I read uh, his books on motivation. He said whenever he, he, he has to uh, give a speech or is waiting for a train, then he would, uh, if he doesn't have anything to do that day, then he would just, he would just look at whoever is in, uh, in, the, in that station or, or in front of the audience waiting for his turn. And then he would focus on one person and he would sort of pray for that person. Then he would focus on another person and then he would pray for that person. Now, he doesn't know these people. So imagine this kind of knowledge against the plethora of knowledge that we have learned in science, geography, blah, 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 blah. blah. But the idea of, accord, I call it, according dignity to others has never been discussed in from when we are kindergarten until we are in PhD at the university. This is not this is not given. And one last thing, I just say that uh, when when uh, there was a proposal for a psychology uh, PhD, I look at the curriculum. It's all psychology, psychology, psychology. I said, where is the the subject on spirituality, uh, Prof? This is a course in psychology. Yes, I know. You know, y y you're doing a course in psychology. I was once a a, a, a patient of a panic disorder for six years. And how I got through it, one part was to look at spirituality in a different way. One part. So, so isn't that, can that not be part of the psychology uh, punya, punya way of dealing of things? I mean, this is not done by, 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 by others, but we could actually consider it. But of course, uh, it was rejected uh, uh, in line with the idea of what psychology is supposed to be. So, so, so that is how uh, uh, I think... Uh, uh, the idea of uh, gender, to me, uh, it's not there because I, I'm dealing with the idea of all uh, human beings, heritage, race, and as I said, gender uh, it doesn't come to my mind at all. Okay, Because in the treating of others, whoever it is, everyone must be accorded dignity. Uh, hello. Okay, gentle conflicts. Gentle conflicts is a millennium's problem. So it goes back all the way to Adam and Eve. So don't try to get a straight answer, you know, in this short forum. Okay, my question is actually on national integration. Uh, Professor, I would like to get your view from it. All right. So you have talked about uh, religious, you have talked about education, you have touched on these two uh, very sensitive uh, uh, topics. You know, uh, there are crazy people all over. There are crazy people like Alvin Tan. You know, you have heard of it, heard of him, Alvin Tan. You know, and we have Rizwan T. You know, those are very uh, two extreme spectrum of the of the problem. So, uh, my 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 problem is not quite on this area. So, in terms of national integration, I would like to look at it as a, a chiropractic issue. Right? So we need to find the root cause of it. I don't think we have really uh, touched on national integration at the moment. You know, when you talk about Sabah, Sarawak and West Malaysia. You know? So the, po the root of the problem, I think hindering national integration is actually the legal aspect, law. Whether we are obeying or whether we are respecting the law. So MA63 is one law that we did not respect. So because of that, uh, you know, it, it funneled down and uh, people are not getting the respect they are entitled to, right? So that goes, boils down to the you know, negative impact on national integration. I'd like to get a view of this issue. Thank you. Yes, uh, first of all, uh, what is integration? And I think what happened in the country, this is just my personal opinion, I'm not an expert in this area, but the sense that I get is very simple. When, when we became uh, independent uh, and then we had to run the country ourselves and we were faced with the problem of so many different races, 
uh, so many different uh, 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 views of their each of the they have their own histories and, and and all this so somebody decided and said okay why don't we become common in something i think that that's what's meant by integration but the problem the, the issue here then was uh, okay then uh, we should become common uh, with one race i think you know meaning there is uh, one race then we have to be a bit more like that race and that race happened to be the idea that they were the first person to be here something like that okay lah i'm not blaming the the, the past okay uh, <coughs> when you are faced with certain crisis when you face with certain historical things uh, I, i always believe that there are no mistakes in history Some people seem to think, what what mistake? If you say mistake, then you have should be able to correct. But history is the past; you cannot correct. So there shouldn't be the idea of be making a mistake. That was the best choice that we made with the best information, with the best tools and whatever that we have at that particular time. Fine. Enam puluh tahun sudah berlalu. Okay. Now, if you still think the same way, susah lah macam ni. Okay. I happen to think that the idea of integration only exists in places where you have, you know, dictatorial regimes where they come in and they say all this tradition um, remove. Now we will create a new, uh, uh, new uh, ideals of whatever values and things like that, like that. A new uh, 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 national anthem, new this, new that, uh, and then we went in, on, on that line. The dasar kebudayaan kebangsaan. And all that. So the daya dasa kebudayaan kebangsaan was created, and gave preference to one particular uh, culture. Now I no longer believe, and I never actually believe in the dasa kebudayaan kebangsaan. I said that all heritage must be respected, must be accorded dignity. The orang asli, the kadazan, the murut, and that is why we should learn all. But why we didn't learn is because of the idea of you have to learn something. You have to be another person, okay? For me, it's fine for you to learn about your own culture, your own race, and your own religion, and also important for others to understand. Now, many people think, why? What for? They are kafir, you know. Itu uh, kata you you tak paham the 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 real meaning of spirituality when God said that you are all different and you have to learn from each other, and you actually need to have complement each other, like. A man and a woman complements them. No equal, sana equal, sini ni. That, that's a different meaning. So, so that to me, that's why I coined the term one many Malaysia. Some people say, oh, you mean bagado bagado ka? No, respecting each other. That's what it means by one many Malaysia. Kalau you kata one Malaysia, it usually means one Melayu Malaysia, isn't it? So, so that's a problem. I mean, I'm a Malay. So what? So what? This is an accident of birth. I could have been born uh, a Sabahan, yeah. <laughs> okay, but but I was not. Oh, why be proud of something accidental? I do I tak paham, you know. So that's why I went into Islamic reform movement because it was a choice, and this is the thing that most Muslim tak paham. If you read the book of Abu Ala Maududi, you know one of the Islamic reform from India, the best Muslim for India, not Malay, uh, India. So they. He wrote and said that you cannot be a true Muslim if your name is Abdul Rahman or your name is Muhammad Yusof. You have to be a Muslim only by choice, only when you understand the fundamental teaching of uh, of of Islam. Then only you can call yourself a Muslim. So that set me on a search of which I am sesat for many years until I came to understand. Ah, I said now. I admit that I'm a Muslim, so that's why I always say that saya masuk Islam dekat Amerika 1984. I say kat macam tu. So, so here is the problem when uh, the idea of inheriting religion suddenly religion can be inherited. Oh, you know, this is supposed to be a personal uh, uh, idea between you and God, and suddenly it becomes institutional. So I think something is wrong somewhere lah. Maybe in history it was like that. Okay lah, like to history. But now we are already past history, so we need to 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 uh, to relook because if not, this is what's happening. Institutional problem is encroaching upon the fundamental ideas of free will. God created us in order to reward or to punish, but with free will. So if you have to pray somewhere, and if you don't pray, you can saman or masuk penjara. I don't know what free will is. 
you know so this is a this is a, <laughs> a problem that we are going to hit now and and and, and so uh, these are the things when i say integration integration to me simply is understanding who you are really and then uh, understanding others because you cannot live without the other okay so 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 this has to be ingrained in education diversity differences is what makes the world go round put hydrogen and hydrogen i don't know what you get put hydrogen and oxygen you get water you know so so that's what differences and complement and even those people yang you call kafir why are you calling them enemy those are the, the uh, interpretation of history the perang salib Huh? Why? Oh, because they don't believe in our God. Tak ada lah ni politician lawan politician. Sama lah juga yang sama sekarang. It's the same thing. So write a different narrative about the meaning and interpretation of history so that those perang salib were because of political empire, ego ke apa-apa ke, but nothing to do with faith. Uh, so so this is not happening. So the professors. Uh, I don't know what they're doing lah. <laughs> so, so this is why we are where we are. So we have to teach ourselves. So I have to come here and I have to explain to you a different narration of Islam, and that's what I have been doing uh, to to many uh, uh, many friends. Unfortunately, they're not Malay lah. Okay, so so <laughs> that's the way. Hello, sorry. Um, so since the question touched on MS history, maybe get uh, Joe to comment a bit uh, on this topic before we open the floor. You want to say something about MS history or? Uh, I think that's a long um, explanation and all that. But <coughs> I just um, <coughs> compile my my writings to print the book, like <laughs> for, <laughs> for my writings. I've been writing a lot about MS sixty three. Yeah, I'll do that. I think. <laughs> so um, I d I don't know how to to explain MS sixty three in a very short form. Right, there's a historical part of it which everybody is trying to research and learn. Many many groups. Ah, forty percent. <laughs> well, forty uh, percent is simple. It's in the constitution, all right. And I don't know why, when somebody has written a law in the constitution, it becomes very difficult for lawyers or judges or the government to interpret. Okay. So I just don't understand. That's my answer. That's all. I mean, you create a law, you agree upon it, and you should, what you call, uh, act on it. Yes, yes. But uh, this is not a long story. I mean, I don't want to talk about that today. Um, any other questions? Yeah, please. Uh, sorry, uh, maybe just to be time management. Uh, now it's uh, yeah. 3, what time is it? Yeah, 3.25. Yeah. I think, bro, don't worry. We'll yeah. send you to the airport on time. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so we know Sabah, yeah. Sabah, KK traffic very well. Yeah. And I think uh, we, we have, uh, well, okay. I think we can take at least uh, two uh, more, two, two, three, two more questions. Okay, Joanna. Uh, maybe Joanna, Michael first, Michael. Uh, because Michael raised the question yeah. first. So, yeah. Okay, okay. okay uh, Professor, uh, Dr. Joe. Yeah. Okay, my name is Michael. I'm from Penang. I'm not from Sabah. But I helped thousands of Sabahans to get a job, change their life in Penang. So I have a good job in uh, multinational electronics. But my question to you, Prof, is, I mean, I mean, I know you because your article are very provocative. Okay, you bring up a lot of issues like uh, second life or education in Malaysia. So I am touching on resetting Malaysia. The title is very big, and I'm sure this is not the first time. Economic Action Council had come up with resetting Malaysia during its months of free time. They have a lot of policies. But uh, now you're starting on the education side. How do you plan to bring this to the top in terms of policy uh, maker in the country so they can relook into what your ideas and, and things that you said in your book so that we can change, we can really reset Malaysia in reality. In reality, like what just now you say about even uh, the concept of Madani, some universities also do not accept it. So how do you, because I know I work with many government agencies. You know, you just like change a bottle of wine, but the wine content is still the same. You know, you just change politicians, but the civil servants is all the same. The Ketua Pengarah, the KSU, everybody is the same. So they are doing the daily job still the same. So I want you to address this issue. Yeah, that was a sh very short answer. Uh, first, don't talk to those people. Lah. <laughs> you know, first of all, you write something and then you suggest 
And then uh, if they don't change, fine, tak ada masalah. But that doesn't mean that we we don't change. So that's why the book is not talking to the top people. It's talking to each and every one of us. In the de- idea number one, in the idea of democracy, who owns this country? It's it's all of us. Uh, this fundamental thing. If the university tak aja, then kita buat camp kita aja sendiri lah. I always said that in one article, a child born, a Malaysian child born in this country has two servant orang gaji. One is called Prime Minister, the other calls Ketua Setiap Usaha Negara. Oh, they all marah bila I cakap ini, they all orang gaji, you know. But they are, that's what they call civil servant. Now they tukar kaki tangan awam, you know. So we don't take this uh, nonsense about uh, nak masuk parking dekat Putrajaya untuk kaki tangan saja. Oh, I said kalau Tesco buat macam tu, they bankrupt lah, you know. You are supposed to serve us, you know. So this nonsense about dress code, and I'm, I'm going to write about it, uh, I am going to say that, Okay, I need, I'm asking Malaysian to respect the dress code. This is my way. Because, uh, you know, we have to understand each other's culture. I'm not agreeing to the dress code. I, I don't think they should have it. But now that they have it, and, and if you're going to go uh, directly against it, then they say, itulah, dia tu liberal memang lah, you know. Okay, fine. But you don't have a right to refuse service. So what you have to do is to to get ready this uh, jubah ke apa ke uh, bagi dia anti pakai ke ataupun uh, uncle tu seluar pendek uh, bagi dia pakai jubah the title of the article is when public buildings become mosque that's my <laughs> so i punya cara tulis is sindiran because this is the malay way malays don't go directly against the the leader you have to you have to tip cpcp tepi so the answer to to you is that We change ourselves. If you are in a corporation, then you teach the necessary values. Number one, country belongs to us. Number two, change has always been within our power. Number three, what the hell do you change to? I develop two uh, two ideas of change. Number one, I call it spiritual values in nation building. There are six values, which cut across all the the religious faith. Number two, the new narratives of history. The narrative of history speaks. Anything that we have done that that was in the past that is uh, very progressive to Malaysia, all of us were uh, contributed to it. Anything that is disastrous to Malaysia, like May 13, all of us are at fault. Don't point fingers, you know. And and everything, all the heritage, everything is is important for us to understand each other. So so these are the the new things that we can. Uh, and, and I think in that book also I have said. And so we have to. Educate ourselves because the the university and the and the uh, and the public uh, uh, school are not going to do it. Once we do that, and then we we explain it, they will later on have to follow. So we don't follow the leader. The leader have to follow us. Uh, so this is my method. Before, before we pass on, I just like to comment. Uh, you can never reset Malaysia if you live in Semenanjung. Okay. First of all, you have to reset Malaya first. Then you can reset Malaysia. Okay, so that's my comment. All right. Hello. That's why he has to come over here and launch the book. Hello, my name is Adrian Leong from American Bar Association Rule of Law Initiative. Congratulations, Professor Tajuddin, on the launch of this book. I have three questions. Uh, the first one is, um, Based on uh, what I heard of your speech earlier, it seemed to me that um, you adopt a what I would view a um, a uh, position that the uh, ins- the, mal- the Muslim institutions that are that are in the federal gov- government are uh, in in their propagation of Islam, their intentions are uh, naive or innocent or, or benign in that they want. Uh, what's best for Islam and not necessarily uh, for the purpose of harming the other religions, wh- whatever they may, may be. Um, is, is my reading of that uh, correct? And uh, my second question is, uh, in your speech, it was uh, not- noteworthy to me that you used the word dignity very many times. And uh, I, don't th- I, I like the word dignity very much, and I don't think I hear enough of it among our leaders. And I wonder whether... Uh, when you use the word dignity, um, you did not use the words human dignity. And I wonder whether that was a, a deliberate uh, uh, wording on your part. And uh, yeah, and uh, 
I, my impression is that uh, your views are very much uh, humanistic, and, and yet you did not use the word uh, human dignity, and nor did I hear the term human rights. I wonder whether human rights, uh, where human rights sits in your view of uh, resetting Malaysia and uh, creating a Malaysia for all Malaysians. And my third question is, uh, because we are in, in Sabah, and uh, we've heard so many anecdotes about uh, Sabahans being so harmonious, how accepting they are of uh, diversity among their family, friends, uh, different religions, that it that doesn't matter. So I would like to hear more about how Sabah could uh, serve as a um, could do could do its part in uh, propagating this uh, uh, accepting and uh, inclusiveness of diversity to uh, Semenanjo. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, the easiest one was the question on human dignity. Uh, I was trained in architecture, not in philosophy. <laughs> okay, so yes, that's what I meant, in human dignity. So. You know, I mean, uh, I talk beyond my discipline, okay? But because I just go with what is it that I, I feel after reading, reflecting, and, and, and writing is just, you just, just write. And, and of course, uh, uh, sometimes when I write sociology, we say, oh, this means this. Well, I don't know all those things because I <laughs> said I've been trained in, in architect architecture. The, the, the question on institution, you should read the, my article on uh, uh, the implications of Madani Islam. Ketuanan Islam and Institutional Islam uh, in Sinchu. Now that explains the, 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 the fundamental problem. Now when I said that the institution ugama ataupun institusi ugama uh, does not intention, uh, have no intention, of course uh, uh, not, I'm not just being polite. I also believe that they have no intention of uh, being evil or dominating whatever. They are, what do you call it? Back, uh, uh, they are left in uh, on ketapa uh, what is it uh, uh, macam uh, uh, they are victim of the past in the sense that uh, in the past you see we started and say that the way that we deal with religion is what i call lulu gua gua approach meaning <laughs> you take care of your religion i take care of my religion and that's why the topics of the kutuba has always been on islam on islam on islam a bomb would explode uh, killing many non non Muslims in Turkey, nobody cares in the in the Kutubah. Okay, if it's involved the Rohingya, uh, Muslims or somewhere, or oh, then the Kutubah will talk about it. And then yeah. so why is it that the Kutubah uh, is not humanistic? You know, it's just an official thing that don't touch on other people punya punya religion. You know, they they, they don't have uh, 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 that. By the way, uh, uh, actually the book is uh, actually sponsored by the American Bar Association. Now all the Malays will then uh, say, okay, now we'll add one more list. Is the American connection <laughs> or agent uh, aside from being Christian sympathizer and all that? But that's fine. You know, I, I was I, I was educated and my much of my uh, uh, adult awakening and, and, and political awareness, even spiritual awareness, uh, derived from my, my time in the United States of six years, the, the, the days of sesat, we call it. Okay? In order to sesat, uh, in order to find your faith, you need to be lost. Okay? The only people who are real sesat are those who never question their inherited so-called ugama, faith, religion, history, and, and whatever it is. We need to uh, to have that. And I forgot the third question. What was the third question? Uh, something to do with... Uh, 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 Sabah role in? Okay. <laughs> I, I thought I, I wrote it in the in the recent article and in, in saying that, uh, well, that one was to protect Sabah. Oh, yeah, you know, that was protecting Sabah. Now, Sabah role... Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, um, uh, uh, it's going to be very difficult because, as as uh, as, uh, as I said, one of the problem in you see it in in Semenanjung, the Islamic uh, 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 narrative is is now becoming very strong. I wrote about it actually uh, two two months after uh, twenty uh, GE fourteen. I said Islam will be the battlefront in the next uh, uh, next general election nobody believed me and, and, and yet this is what we are we are facing okay so so uh, uh, in that regard uh, um, sabah as i said um, has a unique opportunity 
this is what I was talking to some of my uh, Malay uh, uh, friends uh, in Ikram, you know, Ikram, uh, and and I don't know, was there any Abim? Tak ada kan? Uh, masa saya jumpa kan? So so these two are, are, are critical uh, entities in the uh, in the in the forming of the narrative. You know the the history of the Islamic reform. These are the two. Uh, um, uh, entities that swept the country with the idea of what we call Islamic reform, okay, and it, it hit the students first, and then the professionals, and and they were brought about by non-clerics, okay, professionals, Hassan Ali, Shari Sungib, Anu Ibrahim, long list of people who even Sidik Fadil, uh, or of course Sidik Fadil has some uh, uh, religious uh, education. So, so they were the ones, but now it's a different crowd. I said it is the middle class who has retired and now don't, you know, the wanting to be more, uh, more Islamic. They are the ones uh, dictating the agenda, and 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 they are the ones now uh, supporting conservatism. Okay, so it's not that Hadi Awang is popular. It's just that these people uh, have a simple belief that in order to be going to heaven, one of the things you have to protect Islam. And protect Islam must be lah somebody who is Islamic, not 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 Joe Samad or or they, they just have a name that is Islamic but no Islamic credential. Okay, so so you have to have somebody uh, there. So it has to be the battle of muftis again, muftis. Then only we can have some uh, some uh, something going on. So our friend in uh, Ikram and and others, I was trying to pick their brain last night. I think last night, saying that. Uh, can, uh, I mean, within this diversity and within the the the, the Islamic uh, 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 consciousness, uh, uh, can there be this this uh, uh, framework, this philosophical construct of diversity and Islam? Now, Anwar Ibrahim with Madani Islam, you can see it; it's already present there, but it doesn't talk about about you know cultural heritage. It doesn't talk about art. It doesn't talk about all these things. So the universities, uh, God forbid, they also don't talk about it, you know. But they're supposed to. I'm I'm from the art background or architect and things like that. So I can appreciate and I can understand that the work of art is beyond just looking at this, the painting and things like that. It has its own uh, a spiritual construct there. And so so this is not being developed. Okay, this is not being developed. So it's very difficult. So in, in, in order for Sabah to propose a narrative, that has to happen first. But if there is none, and, and if say Ikram and Abim here in Sabah is just following the Semenanjung Ikram and Abim, uh, then there is no hope lah, for, for Sabah to be a model. Cannot be. Okay? Unless and until they said, okay, uh, guys in Semenanjung, perhaps uh, that is the Madani thing here, but here is a, is a, is a, is a warisi thing or, or warisan thing, you know, that has this construct and, 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 and so uh, that becomes a, 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 a model that can be, can be accepted. If not, uh, I'm just, I wrote the article just to tell Sabah you are going to be in trouble in 10 years, you know, and these are the things that maybe you need to do. Okay, in order to uh, to to stem the tide for 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 a, for a, for a while. Okay, uh, so I, I think let's do it that way. We take one more question, and then uh, just now, uh, Tatuk uh, Yap said he want to make some comment about his observation for today forum. We will leave it. Uh, we give him a chance to do that. Then after that, uh, we get the pro to sum it up and uh, do a closing. Right. So yeah, uh, yeah. One last one, last question. Congratulations on your book, uh, Professor. Okay, I'm from uh, Sabahan, but more on the culture. Lah. So, in fact, this, uh, I think, what do you think about Sabah in helping to reset Malaysia? Because we are very rich in cultural heritage. We have our own, I mean, even the women, we have already leaders of women in 1800, but it's hardly taught in school. And we have our women priestesses. In fact, the Kadazan Dusun society, we have a balancing role between men and women in the agrarian society. But because of politics, because of imbalance of education, that is where we have the imbalance of uh, opportunity, in either in politics or in education. So I think it's very important for students or for university to study history, to study the, the cultural uh, make of community of Sabah. 
because here the universal uh, you call us kapir you know but in fact the, we have already our native law we already have our own you know laws and things that is before before islam and christianity came so i feel that this is very important that must be put in 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 your book and so my question is I think further study have to be done, research and incorporate all this because the Semananjung doesn't know much about our cultural heritage. Thank you. Yeah, a quick answer to that is uh, uh, I wish we could reverse the clock beyond uh, uh, 1980 <laughs> because the Islamic reform came then. Now when before 1980, then we could have done the, what, what you have suggested about this diversity uh, taking over the idea of the single race narrative. We have to present the idea that by having this uh, 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 diversity uh, being our strength rather than our handicap, and that we could present the world uh, into economics, in society, in, spiritu in, 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 in all at, uh, this aspect, uh, that is possible. But we cannot turn the clock back. And the, the, the Islamic narrative now is so strong. Did you know that in uh, Kelantan they banned the, the all the Mak Yungs and the and the and this thing? Yeah. So so they don't understand the value of uh, uh, the arts. You know the, the the arts being. I said, look, this one shows that you were once Hindus, and you should be proud of that because that shows that. Uh, the Malays uh, are, are very global and you know and and, and very wide uh, wide reaching, but they only saw no this is haram to so so there is no discourse uh, even in the international Islamic University when I first wrote the curriculum for architecture actually not many people know that and I presented to to Kamal Hassan who's sorry passed away uh, recently and I was also uh, asked to write the, uh, the 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 curriculum for applied arts and when I put on sculpture. He said, oh, this one, the Mufti will not allow, you know. I said, no, but the, the, the role of sculpture like this, like this, like this, he, he doesn't understand, he doesn't appreciate. So the problem here is that our education compartmentalize ourselves into so-called scientists, which we are not, so-called engineers, which we are quite just moderate, so-called architects, so-called this and so-called that, so that we don't see the full picture of life. The full, what you said just now was the full picture of life. This is missing totally in our education construct. Now in the Islamic, I tried to look at Abim and Ikram and said, mana dia punya discourse on seni and, and all this. They don't, I don't think they have it. I'm so, sorry to say, they don't really have uh, uh, that idea about uh, how to look at the heritage and things like that. Uh, it is not developed. It's always developed within the social and the uh, political construct. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, 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 perhaps uh, uh, those who are with the uh, Ikram could, could, could perhaps uh, uh, answer better than me. Okay. Um, so, Tatuk, yep. So you want to make uh, some remarks? <coughs> yeah. Um, <coughs> I think today's subject. Uh, Resetting Malaysia, um, and also the uh, discussions have been uh, very interesting and uh, useful. Um, in um, the discussion, of course, it's about on the one side harmony, the other side is conflict. How to bring conflicts into harmony? I think that's the uh, the uh, subject matter. When we uh, discuss this, uh, this is a relationship, is it, between persons, between groups, between states, between countries. There are three things uh, we have to, um, I think, uh, remember. One very important is sex, S-E-X, sex. Uh. The other one is uh, money. Uh. The third one is fear. Fear not going to heaven to enjoy life. Fear of going to hell to suffer. These are the three things, very important. So those in authority and able to uh, make policies and govern, uh, 
must take these three things into account. So in whatever solution we, we, uh, we talk about, resolving conflicts, bring to harmony, these are the three very important factors. I think in the West, for a long time, they did not understand until the psychology fraud come in. It demonstrated a lot of things. It's related to the sexual impulse. Sexual impulse is, of course, uh, related uh, to human, to bodily survival. See? survival. So it's uh, inside the instinct. It's very important, very deep. And then, uh, and this uh, has a very practical uh, application. In our simple case, in Sabah, for example, we need a lot of uh, foreign uh, workers, foreign labor, mostly from Indonesia and uh, Philippines. At one time, you know, we state government bring in uh, workers from Indonesia, but cannot bring in the wife cannot bring in the children. So gradually, uh, this policy becomes a failure. Now you cannot get, get people to mail to come to work. So this is a very practical application. And now uh, we talk about, about politics, you see, politics. In the case of Sabah, in forming Malaysia, there were certain uh, you know, uh, financial provisions written into the constitution for Sabah. Though there's very specific 40% of revenue uh, derived, derived from, uh, from Sabah by the federal government must be shared with the uh, state government. The other 60% uh, is retained by the federal government for federal services. The other 40% is very specific, must be uh, for, for uh, the state government uh, to, uh, to uh, develop state services. A lot of it, agriculture, uh, uh, about the uh, scientific development, about the uh, eradication of uh, squatters, developing uh, tourism, and so on. a lot of money needed. But this one has not been complied. I think one of the main reasons is the failure of the Treasurer General failure of the Auditory General, failure of the Director of Inland Revenue, or Customs and so on, failure to Statistic Department to let the uh, Federal Cabinet, let the politician know what is the amount of 40% derived from SAPA. They can, they can uh, get it done but it's not done. So as a result, uh, SAPA <laughs> has not been able to receive the 40%. Uh, that is why SAPA is very much underdeveloped, especially, especially in, uh, in uh, state services. Big number of squatters, more than 20,000 squatter houses all over, you know. So this is one of the, the problems uh, this is the conflict, the money, monetary conflict. That is why now you, you, <laughs> you, you see a SAPA MPs and so on speaking in, in, a, in the parliament, asking this and that, a lot of quarrel conflicts. Yeah, this is a monetary conflict. Now, the other one, uh, we talk about, about religion, uh, religious conflict. What is the religious conflict? It's the source of it. It's fear. Fear, see? Well, long ago, uh, the, the, the Christians, you know, many sects, many sects of uh, Christians, they fought, they fight, you know. 
they destroy one and, and, and another because of fear. They quarrel. She said, my doctrine is the, is the one which uh, can, can uh, bring me to heaven. Yours will result going to hell. So they fought. But over the time, uh, they came, you know, came a time and then developed. I think about maybe uh, some time ago, uh, maybe less than 100 years ago, they came to the conclusion, you see, agreed, agreed among the Christian sects. Yeah. Once you believe in your Christian salvation, you believe in Christ and you have accepted Him, you are saved. No amount of work you can do no amount of charity you can do will save you. It is God that determines whether you go to heaven or hell. So once accepted, I mean, whether you are Roman Catholic or not, whether you are, you are Protestant or, or not, you are quite happy. You are not contending anymore, is it? Not contending anymore. I think the same uh, will apply to Muslims. The same. You see, so I think in the Muslim doc doctrine, there must be a, 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 a believer. Once you become a Muslim, once you have surrendered to Allah, you are safe. Nobody can take away that salvation from you. So what, why is there fear again? No more fear. You cannot save yourself. It's only Allah that can, by mercy, you see, let you go to heaven or you go to hell. So I think this, this type of uh, thinking is very, very important in the, um, in the um, resolution of conflicts and bring about harmony. So... Uh, this is, this is the observation I, 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 I want to, to make for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Datuk. And uh, so maybe we'll get the pro to uh, quickly respond and then uh, follow that, you'll sum it up. Oh, yeah. All right, thank you very much uh, uh, for that comment. And uh, yes, I think uh, <laughs> part of what uh, Joe Samad was saying that uh, how can you not understand a contract and a number? <laughs> okay? It's very clear. What will make you not, not that they don't understand, not respect the contract and the number? Simply that there is a view that someone else other than your faith or your race is lower or unimportant than you. That's number one. Human greed, of course, like of, all of us know. Uh, and, and uh, you know, whether it's the prime minister telling to the chief minister of Sabah, Offering him this, offering him that, and whatever. They want. I don't want to comment because I don't really know the history. But of course, everybody knows uh, 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 what are the things that uh, are being mishandled in, 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 in uh, even in Sabah and Sarawak. So I always say that uh, uh, not to blame uh, only one side, but 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 here also there may be some some blames there. But it comes to the fundamental, the fundamental teaching, and this is as I said missing in our education. The fundamental teachings. That number one, we are so afraid to, to, to learn about each other's religion. So afraid that to the point that if you take a Bible and read, then you are said to be converted. What are you, what are you talking about? I mean, this kind of thing should, should no longer be, be there. Can't even visit each other's uh, houses of worship. Now, if, and, uh, if we can understand that and we compare it to the spiritual values, one of the spiritual values that I developed is, that is this. Why did God give us blood? that I can give to a non-Muslim. Okay? Sometimes I wanted to, to write an article saying that we should do away with the classification of Melayu, China, India. We should do away with the classification of, 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 of Muslim, Christians, Buddhists. We should just consider in the card pengenalan Muhammad Tajuddin, Muhammad Rasdi. Kaum O, because my blood type is O. <laughs> so, senang. Right, so so we 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 can exchange organs if the uh, you know the, the blood can accept. Don't don't you think that that is something of a fundamental uh, uh, spirituality uh, uh, that 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 needs to be ingrained in every single one who believes in a certain faith? 
Yeah. So if you can have that, and and what Ajam Bram say, giving dignity to others, so it's no problem when you look at this 45 percent that is due to these people. Whether they are many or not many doesn't matter. Whether they are of your race or race doesn't matter. Whether they are of your faith or not, it doesn't matter. The fact is that there was an agreement, and that you need to respect that agreement. If not, your own God will punish you <laughs> for not agreeing to that agreement. But somehow the narrative is different. It's being taught that okay, one religion is better than others. One race is. More deserving of others. Now this has to stop. Okay, this has to stop. Now some will then say, "Oh, then you are not thinking of the poor uh, Malays and Muslim, eh, eh, Muslim poor other merata lah." And who is responsible to help the poor Malays? It is the Malays themselves. Those who are rich and can afford to go for pilgrimage ten times, you should reconsider. And probably God will ask, why you go for ten time? One cukup lah, you know. And the other nine you give to the to the to the miskin. That's why I give my charity directly to a family that I know. I don't give to the Department of Religious Affairs. I don't want them to buy a new Mercedes, you know. So so <laughs> it's just direct. You 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 do it yourself. And if if a hundred a one time uh, uh, approval was given for. For four hundred thousand optional pilgrimage, meaning the Umrah, you know. So if you have four hundred thousand people who can afford to spend twenty, thirty, forty thousand ringgit, if they can adopt one family of Malays, we won't have any poverty problem. God is not going to ask Anwar Ibrahim or Najib Tun Razak. He's going to ask you, who has money, who have you helped? Yeah, that is the fundamental thing. So. The idea of my book here was to say that we need to do the change ourselves. If you want to be shouting to your chief minister or the prime minister, they have their certain problems or they don't want to change it. To dia punya pasal lah. But we still responsible for our society. And in in Islam, I'm going to be asked certain things. And and this is the thing that we need to uh, clear within our own control within our own effort so so that is the the the, the gist of uh, of the resetting malaysia and lastly i would like to thank all my sabahan uh, uh, saudara saudara to uh, give me the uh, the benefit of your trust and the benefit of your uh, uh, compassion in allowing uh, uh, someone that is outside of your uh, culture to come and give a hope that malaysia <laughs> Still exists at least in Sabah, lah. You know. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Pro, your your good friend here, Mr. Ho, want to uh, just sum up one minute. Uh, yeah. Yeah, say something. First of all, thank you, Professor, for coming to launch your book, and we respect you very much on all the articles you've written. Um, for me, I'm making a statement or a query or an answer for you to answer. Uh, Malaysia is the only country in the world I felt the only country in the world that is very unfair to a big part of its citizens by allowing immigrants that comes in, couldn't be 70 years old, 80 years old, but the moment they become citizen of the day, they immediately got better birthright than third generation original born citizen of the country via religion. Imagine a 70 uh, year old, let's say Pakistani, he, he comes in here and he become, he managed to apply and get a my card. Immediately, he got better citizen right than your great-grandchildren, your grandchildren and you. To me, that's the policy of agreement to having Malay special right was during the time, 1957 or something, or, or claiming to have your special right. We thought that, or my great-grandfather thought that was for the citizen of the day. But you start to Im import millions of new immigrants having better rights than my grandchildren. And by the way, I don't have grandchildren yet. Uh, that's the issue I'm raising that maybe we have to think about it. We better stop it. Thank you. Okay. Anything to add? I think it's a statement. Uh, it's a fair statement, right? All right. So uh, with that, uh, we're close to this session. Uh, as I said uh, at the very beginning of this uh, dialogue, uh, today is only a, no, so a, st a starting point, and uh, the purpose of today is to bring uh, Professor Tadujin here to network, and hopefully this will bring more opportunity for collaboration uh, 
with uh, different NGO and different people here who have uh, shared the same interest and passion. So I think with that, I would like to thanks again, uh, Pro and uh, wife, for traveling all the way from Malaysia uh, from scale, right? Despite of their busy schedule. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Someone speaking, well. <laughs> so all the way from uh, KL to uh, to KK to to share this with us. Thanks again. Uh, we, we give him.